Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session. My name is Maroon. I am the VP of Operations at Farhat Accounting Lectures, and I'm more than happy to guide you through this earnings per share CPA exam simulation. By solving this simulation, I'm hoping to achieve two major learning objectives. The first one is to help you make a clear distinction between the two methods to compute the weighted average of common stock outstanding, or WAXO, the second objective is to understand the effect of stock split and stock dividend on the computation of FAXO. How are we going to do that? We're going to give two e examples. The first example is without a stock split. And the second example is with a stock split. And we're going to see the difference in the computation of the WAXO and the basic EPS. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Elijah Sales Corporation has two types of stock in its capital structure, non-convertible cumulative preferred stock and common stock. Let's pause for a second here and make sure we understand the meaning of non-convertible preferred stock and the meaning of cumulative preferred stock. Non-convertible preferred stock means that it is not a convertible security. It may not be converted to common stock. So it's not going to have any effect on the computation of the diluted EPS. Cumulative preferred stock means that regardless of whether dividends were declared during the year, we're going to take into consideration the dividends accumulated during the period and the computation of the numerator of the basic EPS and the numerator of the diluted EPS. It's going to reduce the income available to common shareholders. The details of the stock are as follows. We have the information about preferred stock, the number, total, number of total shares outstanding, par value per share, dividend rate. And you have information about common stock transactions, the stock outstanding uh, at the beginning of the year, additional shares issued. Those are going to add to our beginning balance. And we have shares acquired as treasury stock for cash on August 1st. This is going to be a reduction in the outstanding balance. Why? Because the outstanding balance is the difference between the shares issued and the treasury stock. They are not outstanding in the hands of external shareholders. So they're going to reduce the outstanding balance of the common stock. Assuming the net income for the year is 1,500,000, and no dividends were declared during the year. This information is irrelevant here. Why? Because we have cumulative preferred stock. Regardless of whether dividends were declared, we're going to take into account the dividends accumulated. If the preferred stock was non-cumulative, then this information would be relevant, and the numerator, numerator would have been 1,500,000 because no dividends were declared. However, because it is cumulative, we have to reduce this 105, 1,500,000 by the dividends that are going to accumulate to the preferred shareholders. What we are required to do is we are required to compute the basic EPS. And we're going to start by computing the numerator of the formula. What's the formula? It's net income minus preferred dividends divided by the WAXO. So in our numerator, we have the net income, which is already provided as 1,500,000. Preferred dividends, we have to compute it as the number of preferred shares multiplied by the par value multiplied by the dividend rate. So first we have to compute what is the total par value and multiply it by the dividend rate. So we have 100,000 shares multiplied by the par value of $10, which is 1 million. Multiply 1 million by 6%, how much you're going to get? 60,000. This is our, these are our preferred dividends. Now we can compute 
our numerator as the difference between net income and preferred dividends, 1,500,000 minus 60,000. Our numerator is 1,440,000. Next, we're going to solve our denominator, our WAXO. We're going to compute WAXO using the first method, which deals with the changes in balances. At the beginning of the year, we had a beginning balance of 750,000. How long was this balance outstanding? This balance was outstanding from January 1st until May 1st. So January, February, March, April. It was outstanding for four months. What we're going to do here is we're going to see the fraction of the year. We're going to multiply it by the outstanding balance. So 750,000 multiplied by four divided by 12. We're going to get the weighted average, which is 250,000. So out of the 12 months during the year of the year, this beginning balance was outstanding only for four months. So it represented four out of 12 of the balances outstanding of the year or one third, one third. The second balance is on May 1st because we have an event here. We have a change in the balance. We have to account for it and we have to, uh, to compute the new balance. The new balance is the 750,000 plus 300,000, it's 1,050,000. This new balance would be multiplied by the fraction of the year. It was outstanding. How many months this balance was outstanding from May 1st till August 1st, we have May, June, July, three months. So we're gonna multiply by three, divide by 12, and the result is 262,500. Our last event is on August 1st. This is the last event of the year. So we're going to compute the period from August 1st until December 31st. And we have to compute the shares outstanding by deducting those shares. So it's minus 150,000. And the balance outstanding is 900,000 on August 1st multiplied by the number of months which is August, September, October, November, December. You can use your hands to count. Five months out of 12. So I'm going to multiply the outstanding balance of 900,000 by five, divide by 12. I get my last weighted average. Finally, I'm going to sum up all these weighted averages. And I'm going to get my WAXO, my denominator, which is 887,500. One thing to notice here is that the sum of the numerator of the fractions here, four plus three plus five is 12, 12 months. This is only relevant for this method. We're gonna see in the next method that it's gonna be different. Our second method deals with the changes and not with the outstanding balance after each event. So we don't have to compute the outstanding balance after each stock transaction, which makes it, in my opinion, much easier than the first method. So first, we're going to look at the beginning balance, which is the 750,000. Instead of multiplying it by the period it was outstanding, which is the from January 1st to May 1st, what we're going to do with this method is we're going to multiply the change with the number of months remaining during the year and divide by 12. So the beginning balance, um, it's going to remain for the 12 upcoming months. So it's always in this method, it's going to be included in full in the computation of the WAXO. The second event occurred on May 1st. We have shares issued. Here we don't have to compute the balance like the first method and add the 300,000 to the 750,000 and get our balance of 1 million and 50 and then multiply it by uh, the period this balance was outstanding. No, 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 we don't have to do any of that. All we have to do is see this event or this change, how long it lasted during the year. It lasted for eight months from May 1st till December 31st. So I'm gonna multiply by eight and divide by 12 and I'm gonna get 
my second weighted average. The third weighted average is on the event occurring on August 1st. Same thing, I'm gonna deal with the change, which is minus 150,000. How many months remain? We have August, we have September, October, November, December, five months. So I'm gonna multiply by five and divide by 12. It's minus 62,500. Finally, I'm gonna sum up the weighted averages and I'm gonna get the same result as the first method, which is 887,500. And notice here, my numerators will not add up to 12 in the fractions. Finally, we, we can compute the basic EPS by dividing the numerator by the denominator. The numerator is already computed as 1,440,000. The denominator, the WAXO, is already computed as 887,500, and the basic EPS is $1.62. Next, we're gonna look at the same exercise, but with a small twist. There is a two for one stock split on October 1st. How this stock split gonna affect the computation of the WAXO? And the basic EPS we're gonna see using the two methods we talked about earlier. Now there's no change in our numerator because there's no change to net income, no change to preferred dividends. However, the WAXO is going to change. Why? Because the stock split is going to be applied retrospectively on the date of the transaction. So for the beginning balance, the number of shares is 750,000. The actual outstanding balance is the same, and the outstanding balance to compute WAXO is the actual outstanding balance multiplied by two, which is 1,500,000, multiplied by the fraction of the year. We're gonna get our weighted average of 500,000. On May 1st, the actual outstanding balance increased to 1,050,000, which is 750 plus 300. What we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply the actual outstanding balance by two. So the stock split is applied to this balance and the outstanding balance to compute WAXO is 2,100,000 multiplied by the fraction of the year, which is three divided by 12. We get 525,000. Finally, when we have reacquired shares on August 1st, of 150,000, our actual outstanding balance will decrease to 900,000. And we're gonna multiply our outstanding, the actual outstanding balance by two. The outstanding balance to compute WAXO is 1,800,000 multiplied by the fraction of the year, five divided by 12, we get a weighted average of 750,000. Finally, we're gonna sum up all the weighted averages and our WAXO is 1,775,000. Again, the fractions of the year add up to 12 months. Why? Because each outstanding balance is replacing the old one. It's replacing the old one. Unlike the changes, the changes add up. They don't replace any new change, do not, does not replace the old change, but it accumulates, it's at, it adds up to the old change. But for the balances, they're gonna replace. So 750,000 outstanding from January 1 till May 1. Then we have a new balance from May 1 till August 1. Then a new balance from August 1 till December 31st. Finally, we're gonna look at the computation of WAXO using our second method. Here we're gonna see it's much simpler because all we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply the changes, our actual changes by two, to apply the stock split retrospectively. So 750,000 multiplied by two is 1,500,000. Multiplied by 12 divided by 12, 1,500,000. On May 1st, when we issued shares, we issued 300,000 shares, we're gonna multiply those 300,000 shares, those changes by two. And the number of share, shares to compute WAXO is 600,000 multiplied by the number of months remaining. 
from May 1st till December 31st, you have eight months remaining divided by 12. Finally, on August 1st, we have reacquired shares and the number of reacquired shares is 150,000. So we're gonna multiply minus 150 by two. We get minus 300,000 multiplied by five divided by 12. So five is the number of months remaining during the year. We get one, minus 125,000. Add those three numbers together, you're gonna get the WAXO of 1,775,000, which is the same as the computation using the method one. Finally, we can compute the basic EPS by dividing the numerator, which is the 1,000,000 440,000, which is not different from the numerator computed without the stock split because the stock split doesn't affect the net income or the preferred dividends. It doesn't affect the net income available to common shareholders. The WAXO is different now. It's double the amount that we have computed without a stock split. Why is that? Because the date of the stock split was after all the stock transactions that occurred during the year. That's why all the transactions have been multiplied by two. It was applied retrospectively. Now, if the date of the stock split preceded any of the stock transactions, this computation would not work. It would not be double this amount. The WAXO would not be double the amount without the stock split. But because the stock split occurred after all the transactions, all the trans transactions occurring before the stock split are multiplied by two. And the basic EPS is gonna be half the amount that you have computed in the exercise without the stock split. Why? Because our denominator has doubled. It's now double the amount. So the basic EPS, it's half the amount that you have computed without the stock split. What should you do now? You should go to Farhat Lectures, look for additional resources to prepare for your CPA exam and intermediate accounting exam. Thank you for watching and happy studying.